In this video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at the Painted Lady Butterfly with some real-life Painted Lady Butterflies to observe. Of course, they're not butterflies just yet, they're still caterpillars. On my shelf here, I've got 10 Painted Lady Caterpillars, which we'll be looking after over the course of this video. So let's take a closer look at them right now, and let's talk a little bit about what to expect in the coming video. The Painted Lady is a migrant butterfly to the UK. The species actually originates from North Africa. It's believed that once population density reaches a certain level, it triggers the migration instinct and the butterfly begins its incredible journey across Europe and arriving in Britain from late March. They are found all over the world with the exception of Antarctica and South America. Once they arrive in Britain, they will breed, with the peak of the population found in August. Many of the Painted Lady butterflies will make the return journey to Africa in autumn. It is unable to survive the winter here in Britain and any that remain will die out. This applies to all life stages. I must say, so far, they're one of the easiest animals I've ever had to look after. I don't need to feed them, I don't need to water them. Everything they need is contained in the food substance at the bottom of this pot. I wonder if that would work for any other animals. Don't worry, Charlie. It will have everything you need. Ah, well, maybe I need a bigger box. So as well as the caterpillars, I received a whole kit and instructions on how to look after. I thought we'd just take a quick look through the box to see what kind of things came through. So it comes with an instruction booklet. I'll be reading through this uh, thoroughly uh, in just a moment, uh, which tells us about the steps that we need to, to care for them and what everything in the box is for, and tells us a little bit about the butterflies themselves as well. So uh, we're reading that later. It comes with uh, two of these cardboard boxes to make up. Now these are uh, chrysalis stations. So once they have turned into chrysalises, they will attach themselves to the lid of the pot and the lids then get stood up in here so we can observe the chrysalis um, and then place them into the butterfly garden, which I'll show you in just a moment. Also comes with two packets of sugar to make up some uh, sugar solution to be able to feed the adults. And it comes with a uh, pipette to be able to feed them as well. Now this kit's primarily intended for uh, children, um, so it does also come with some butterfly life cycle figurines. And uh, we've got the, the adult, we've got the egg, the caterpillar and the chrysalis. I think I might try and arrange them on my shelf somehow, I think that might look quite good. And of course the only other thing here is the butterfly garden itself. So this is a pop-up structure and you'll be able to place the chrysalises inside here and uh, as they emerge in adults you can kind of keep them for a couple of days and observe the adults themselves before releasing them back into the wild. And there we go, so that's the complete kit. So that's going to be really exciting uh, to watch the development of the caterpillars over the next couple of weeks. Now they're going to be in these tubs here for one to two weeks, about seven to 14 days according to the guide. Um, I've had them a couple of days and it's actually the first chance that I've had to do any filming. And I kind of regret that a little bit because uh, I received these uh, two days ago and the caterpillars have already grown hugely. They are at least four times the size uh, than they were when I first got them. I did take a photograph of them when I first got them, so I'll put them up on screen now so you can see how small they are when I first got here. And literally just two days later, um, they are already pretty big. In these clips here, you can see the caterpillars spinning silk threads. This has two purposes. Firstly, it's a defensive measure. They use the silk to pull the leaves around them to hide from predators. Also, the silk provides a measure of physical protection that a potential predator has to break through to get at it. Secondly, the silk acts as an anchor that the caterpillar can grip onto to prevent it from blowing off the host plant in strong winds. You may notice several blobs of orangish material caught up in a webbing or at the bottom of the pot. This is called frass, and it's just the caterpillar's waste. Over the next few days, the caterpillars spent all their time eating and growing. The room they're in can get very warm and development will speed up in warm conditions, so they were growing very fast. On the sixth day, the caterpillars had stopped feeding and began to spend more time by the top of the pot. I could tell something was about to happen. Late evening, the caterpillars began to attach their tails to the top of the pot and hang down in a J shape. This is the beginning of pupation. Typically, the full process happened while I was asleep, so I didn't get the full process on camera. When I checked on them in the morning, the process had been completed. Luckily, my friend Ben Fitzcosta kindly let me use footage he shot last year of his own Painted Lady Caterpillars. 
I'll leave the link to his channel in the description of this video. Please do check it out for some great videos on wildlife photography. The complete process takes almost 6 minutes, but I've sped it up here to take around 35 seconds. The chrysalids are very vulnerable and soft, but over the next 2 or 3 days they harden. It's important not to disturb them during this time. The chrysalises have been hardening for about two and a half days, so now it's time to take them out of the pot and to put them into their butterfly enclosure ready for when they emerge. I think this is going to be a pretty delicate process, so uh, let's see what we can do. But one very important step needs to be completed. As the caterpillars pupate, it's easy for them to come tangled in the silk or in frass that cover the pots. If this is left in place, it's possible the butterflies can become caught in it when they emerge. This can lead to deformities as the delicate wings can't expand properly. It may even cause the death of the butterfly, so it's important to clear away the silk and frass before the butterflies need to emerge. What you're seeing here is a defence mechanism. The chrysalids will vibrate if they sense movement and become disturbed. This action can confuse or frighten a predator. Using a cotton bud, I carefully removed all the silk and shed skin surrounding the chrysalids. A couple of the chrysalids had fallen from the lid and remained in a pot. Using a spoon, I carefully scooped them up and placed them on a piece of tissue. These needed cleaning also. After cleaning the chrysalids, they can be placed in a butterfly garden. They will typically pupate over the course of about 7 to 14 days. During this time, the caterpillar parts inside are liquefying and rearranging to become the cells, tissues and organs of a butterfly. The sign that the butterflies are getting ready to emerge is the darkening of the chrysalids. This happened very quickly in my case, only about 5 days later. This time I was ready with my camera, determined not to miss the big moment. Once again, the caterpillars chose to do this overnight, but I stayed up until around 4am to make sure I didn't miss it. The process of emergence is surprisingly quick. When the butterfly is ready to emerge, it takes in air through tiny spiracles in the chrysalis. This intake of air pressure helps split the chrysalis open. The butterfly will quickly climb out of its chrysalis and position itself head upwards in a vertical position. The wings are small and shriveled, but the butterfly will sway from side to side, forcing hemolymph into the wing veins to expand them to their full size. Once the first one emerged, it wasn't too long before the others began too.
Here you can see the butterfly coiling and uncoiling its proboscis. When the butterfly first emerges, its proboscis is in two parts. These need to fuse together to create a tube-like tongue that the butterflies use to sip nectar. You may see some spots of red liquid dotted about the sides or floor of the habitat and smeared across the lids of the pots. This might be mistaken for blood, but it's actually called meconium and is the leftover waste material stored in the butterfly's abdomen, not needed to complete metamorphosis. It is red due to the colour of the butterfly. Other species can have different coloured meconium. The butterflies need to rest for a while after the emergence, but after they have rested they will begin to become more active. They start to climb the inside of the habitat, flexing their wings and working their flight muscles. The butterflies are now ready for food. I placed some orange pieces in the habitat. I had split the oranges with a knife to give the butterflies easy access to the fruit juice inside. I also used the sugar that came with the kit to make up some nectar. I used the pipette to drop the nectar onto the fruit and tissue inside the habitat. You can also place flowers inside the habitat and drop some sugar solution onto the flowers to make sure there is plenty of food for the butterflies. I kept the butterflies for another day for observation, but I must admit I felt a little uncomfortable watching them fly around inside the habitat, trying to fly away. I'm sure they would be okay, but I didn't want them to damage their wings, so I felt it best to release them as soon as possible. I took them out of my back garden and opened the habitat. Some of them needed a little bit of encouragement. If butterflies are your thing, why not check out last week's video where I saw many different species of butterfly while out for a walk around the Winston Dunes Nature Reserve. Or check out last year's video of my big butterfly count. Well thank you for watching this week's video. I release videos every Sunday so why not come back next week? Make sure you subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please do leave a like and a comment, it really helps the channel. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.